Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Samantha Ritchie. This week we're going to be talking about a general strike in Tunisia, about violence against women, about Brazilian unions and their innovative use of social media, and about some of the upcoming web conferences that we have. There is a general strike today in Tunisia called by the UGTT, the General Federation of Tunisian Workers, in protest against the assassination of secular left-wing leader Chokri Balaid. Uh, Tunisia was the first country to experience the Arab Spring and it's been considered a bit of a role model because it's a lot more stable than Egypt and certainly Syria and some of the other countries that have gone through uh, that transformation. However, there has been ongoing tension between Islamists and the secular left um, the Enada government is an Islamist government and many people blame the assassination of Mr. Belaid on supporters of that government and it certainly looks like there's a huge amount of unrest in Tunisia today as a result of that assassination. So our thoughts are with our comrades in, in that region and we hope that you succeed in building a better country through standing together and protesting against this. Uh, Sam, there's more terrible things in the news about violence against women and you've been following this closely. Do you want to tell us what the the latest stories are. Well, well in, in March it is the 57th annual conference at CSW, which is the Commission on Status of Women, and it's happening in New York in the UAN offices. Um, and the theme of, of this year is the elimination of violence against women and girls. Um, this is a, in, in relation to that, um, on Wednesday it was um, Zero Tolerance of um, Female Genital Mutilation Day um, throughout the world. And, Worldwide, 100, 120 million women and girls are affected by female genital mutilation. Um, FGM is a cultural problem and, it affect, and it's been going on for over 2,000 years throughout the world. Um, usually it's predominantly in Africa and Middle East countries where these sort of things are carried out, but there is an increase in the UK as well of this happening. Um, there are also four main, main types of FGM which are, which are carried out on women and it's a pretty brutal procedure. Um, usually it happens to girls who are going through puberty, like young girls, so it is a breach of human rights and it's abuse of children um, because they're taking advantage of the fact that they're young. Um, FGM can also lead to death in many girls during the procedure. It can have HIV AIDS because they use dirty materials to do the procedure. Um, it can lead to increased risk of maternal infancy, mortality and obstruction during labour and difficulties um, during sex. And um, th There is a decrease though um, because the U UNICEF re released statistics which showed that 36% of girls between the ages of 15 to 19 in the 29 countries which this has taken pl place compared to um, 53% of women who have had this done in the ages of 45 to 49, so there is a decrease, but it is still going on and it does not affect quite a lot of women around the world. And more horrifically is that more and more health professionals like doctors and nurses are carrying out these type of procedures, which is worrying to say the least. Um, there has been progress made, but this needs to be raised at the Commission Stats of Women Conference in UN in March because this is a type of violence against women and, need, and girls and needs to be resolved. Um, also, um, we've looked at um, the South African rape which happened um, last week. Um, it happened to a girl called Aneen Boyson and happened um, 80 miles out of um, Cape Town um, in, a, in a town called Bredesdorp. Um, this, it was a, a carried out on a 17-year-old young girl and, um, who was allegedly lured away by, from her ex-boyfriend um, into a construction site. Um, the horrific, horrific attack happened. Um, they've arrested three men so far, including her ex-boyfriend, because before she died, she did tell the, one of the two security guards who did find her um, that she was, it was him that was a part of it. Um, sh um, during the attack it was so horrific that they actually sliced her open and removed her intestines with their hands and various other organs so it was it's not just a, a rape it's brutal and it's mm -hmm. a breach of human rights and what they're doing um, according to um, President Jacob Zuma he's called for harsher sentences um, to happen to people who commit sex crimes and he also called the attack cruel, shocking and inhumane. 
Um, although that he's calling for harsher sentences, I don't really feel that this is actually going to tackle the cultural problem of rape in South Africa because Johannesburg has been called the rape capital of the world and um, it's also considered a male bonding session. In, in 2009, um, the Research Council re released statistics showing that more than a quarter of men in South Africa has carried out a rape and half of that. Um, those men have carried out more than one and even these statistics back then did not spark change. Um, in response to this, um, the SMWU, a trade union in South Africa, has released a statement in stating that what they want to do to tackle this and what harm this is doing in society and you can actually see that statement on our website if you want to have a look at that. Um, what else has been happening, Moulton? Oh, that's an absolutely horrifying story, Sam. It really is awful. Mm -hmm. And I can only hope that the amount of outrage that you've seen in India, which might lead to some kind of change, yeah. I just really hope that people in South Africa do something mm -hmm. on the same scale. Because, as you say, the, the level of, of rape there is, is really horrifying. Yeah. And it's because there's become a generalised acceptance mm -hmm. um, that, that women's lives aren't that valuable yeah. and um, it has to change because yeah. it's, it's, just, it's just really, really terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose uh, news from USI is that we, we continue to do web conferences on uh, things which we think are interesting and important and right now the economy is quite important because of the propaganda we get from the mainstream media about the need for austerity. Um, we have been able to demonstrate time and again that this is not the case. It's based on false evidence, it's propaganda, not uh, economics. And we've done this by interviewing some of the world's top economists on more than one occasion, and they have reiterated again and again that austerity doesn't work. Just last week we spoke to James K. Braith, who spoke about the need for a higher minimum wage and better collective bargaining uh, to put spending power back in workers' pockets and save the economy. Uh, next week we're going to be speaking to Anne Pettifer of the New Economics Foundation, Paul, Paul Omerud, formerly of uh, The Economist magazine, and uh, also Ricardo Bella Fiore. Uh, so do take part in those web conferences, or if you can't, watch them afterwards on YouTube. Um, because they, they're really interesting. They give insight into economics that you won't get from the mainstream media. Sam, you spent a lot of time last week editing a video for us, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, it was um, to do with trade unions and the social media in Brazil and what impact it's actually had on the union movement. Um, Brazil seems to be quite ahead of everyone else when it comes to social media and the way that they communicate with our members. Um, on our website we've got a video and it's, um, it's, a t it's from a TV programme called Click, Click Leak um, on Red, Red TVT which explores new technology in the union movement. Um, activists from the Metal Workers Union, CNM and CUT and the Food Workers Union Contact um, came on to highlight um, how they actually organise workers via social media like Facebook, Twitter, um, things like that and um, it's, it shows that unions can do campaigns via social media and reach out to more members mm -hmm. and it can increase activity in the union movement and actually help organising. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really informative video and I recommend that everyone yeah. sees it. It's, it's well worth watching. The Brazilians have done an excellent job yep. and they, they way ahead of us in terms of using yeah. this. So, um, I think that's all we have for you this week. Yeah. So once again, thank you for watching or listening to our news update. Mm -hmm. Solidarity.